this is an introductory into the graph of an absolute value function. Now, there are a couple ways of looking at an absolute value function. You can look at the absolute value function as a value that tells you a distance to zero. In other words, the absolute value of negative two has a distance of zero of two. That's one way of looking at an absolute value symbol. Another way of looking at an absolute value symbol is simply as a command statement that says force this value positive. So for the purpose of making a graph, I'm going to look at this absolute value symbol here as force whatever's inside of that value to be positive. So to so take a look at this, I'm going to start off with this one by making a table. I'm going to look at some x values and some y values from the function. So as I make my table, I'm simply going to plug these x values into the function. For the first one, I'm going to plug in 1. and simplify this. Well, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And the absolute value is going to force that negative to a positive 2. So I really have, after the absolute value, a positive 2 plus 2, which is 4. And I'm going to keep plugging in my x values. And now I have 2 minus 3 inside the absolute value, which is negative 1, plus 2. But the absolute value is going to force this value to be positive 1, plus 2, which is 3. And as we continue on, can't really force zero to positive because it's the number zero literally means nothing. So we simply have zero plus two, which is two. In this situation, I now have the absolute value of one. Because an absolute value forces this value to be positive, if it's already positive, then the absolute value symbol doesn't do anything at all. So it's simply 1 plus 2, which is 3. And I'll continue plugging in. Five minus three is two. And again, since this value is already positive, the absolute value symbol will do nothing at all to it. And 2 plus 2 is 4. As I make a graph of this situation, start off with 1, 4, which is approximately here on my graph. I'm going to look at 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 3, and 5, 4. Notice my absolute value graph looks like a V. Now this is the long method of finding the graph of it. This point right here is called the vertex. And our 
vertex is located at 3, 2. It's called the vertex because this is when we change from decreasing to increasing, forming that V. Notice this 3, when I plugged it into my formula, I ended up with a 0 inside of the absolute value symbol. We're going to use this to go directly to the vertex from the formula. So really what I'm looking for is what makes the number inside the absolute value symbol 0. When you find it, you will find the x value of the vertex. So, now we have another function, f of x equals 3 minus the absolute value of 2 minus x. We're going to start off this time by looking for the vertex directly. How are we going to find the vertex? Well, the trick of finding the vertex is realizing it is the number that makes the value inside the absolute value 0. So let's talk about the number inside the absolute value. 2 minus x represents the value inside the absolute symbol, and I want to set that equal to 0 to find my vertex. At this point, I can solve for x. The easiest way would probably be to add x to both sides, and I end up with 2 equals x, or x equals 2. We now know this is the x value of my vertex. So I've got the vertex has an x value of 2. I'm going to use the formula to find the y value. I'm simply going to plug 2 in there. So to find the y value for 2, using the formula, notice 2 minus 2 is 0. Absolute value does nothing to 0. So I end up with 3 minus 0, which is simply 3. So I've now found the vertex. Again, let me recap what I did. I took the number inside the absolute value, which was 2 minus x. I set it equal to 0. I solved for x. That gave me that 2 was the x value of my vertex. I plug 2 into the formula, and the formula always gives me the y value. So this is my vertex. If I wanted to graph this, I could look roughly at this point here. Is my vertex. Now, my graph is going to be a V, so I'm going to need a little bit more information to finish finding the graph. Now, I can choose any other point to find values on my function. So I'm going to now choose the point where x equals 0. Any point will work. So let's take a look at f of 0. OK, so I have 3 minus the absolute value of 2 minus 0. 2 minus 0 is 2. Absolute value does nothing to the 2, so I simply have 3 minus 2, which is 1. So now I have a point where x is 0, and the y value is 1, which is about here. So my graph looks just like shape, and I started with the vertex 2, 3. I only needed one point because I knew it was going to make a V, 
and the only way I could make a V was to go in the opposite direction. Now, if you'd like, we can test that this actually is on the graph by choosing some other value, maybe choosing 4 for my, oops, this should have been f of 0 there. Sorry about that. So let's look at f of 4. Three minus the absolute value of two minus four. Two minus four is negative two. So the absolute value is going to force that to be a positive two. So I have three minus two, which is one. So the graph at four is one. Okay, now we're looking at the graph that we just figured out, and we're going to describe some of the characteristics of this graph. First of all, I'd like to talk about when this function is increasing. And then I'd like to talk about when this function is decreasing. The important thing to remember about increasing and decreasing the answer is always given with the x values. So notice, at this part of the function, as I move from left to right, my function is increasing. So I answer this with how far can I go to the left. And I can go to the left forever, which is negative infinity. And then I answer how far can I go to the right, and I can go to the x value, 2. 2 is given in brackets because increasing is a relationship between two points, and any point to the left of 2 and to the x value of 2 will have a positive average rate of change. Notice, once we hit 2, the function starts to decrease. So the furthest to the left where it's decreasing is 2 in brackets, and it will decrease to the right forever, which will be given to the right is positive in the x direction. Remember, x is getting positive even though the y value is going down. It is positive for the x. Next thing I'd like to describe is when the function is positive and when the function is negative. When we're talking about the function, what we're talking about is the y values. Notice, at this point right here, the y value is 0. And at this point right here, the y value is 0. So between this x value and this x value, my function is positive. Over here my function is negative, and over here my function is negative. It looks like this x value is about negative 1. And this x value is about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. However, we don't know whether that is exact or not. So I'm going to show you how to use algebra to find the exact x values here and here. So let's start with what we know. We don't know the x value, but we know here the y value is 0. And the same for this point. I don't know the x value, but I do know the y value is 0. And the y value is my function. So I'm going to set the y value to 0. And now I'm going to solve this equation for x. So, first thing I want to do is I could either move my 3 over here with subtraction, or I can move this object over with addition, which would probably be the easier thing to do. So I'm going to add this absolute value of 2 minus x to both sides. And on the right, I'll end up with 2 minus x. I'm sorry, on the left. And on the right, I will just end up with the 3. So, 
To remove this absolute value, I have to examine two situations. Because the absolute value of 3 equals 3, let's take a look at what I'm writing. The absolute value of 3 equals 3 and the absolute value of negative 3 equals 3. And that's the two situations I'm dealing with. My number inside is either going to be 3, that's inside, or the number inside is going to be negative 3. I'm going to solve for x in both situations. The first situation, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Negative x is 1. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. x equals negative 1. Notice this point on the graph. This corresponds to what I just found here. x is negative 1, and y will be 0. Now we're going to look at this other x value. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. But I have a negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. And now for both sides, I'm going to divide through by negative 1. And I end up with x equals 5. So when x is 5, the y value is 0. I just found my other point. So now I know exactly when my y values change from negative to positive when x is negative 1. And they change from positive to negative when x is 5. So now I can answer the second part of the question. X is, I'm sorry, the function is positive when x is in between negative 1 and 5. In this situation, you will always use parentheses. It is negative in two separate situations. Over here to the left of negative 1, that would be from negative infinity, negative 1, parentheses. It's also negative over here after 5. So this would be the case of 5 to positive infinity. Since both of these intervals work, we connect them with a u. So we have now answered when is the